Welcome, Gun Runner. Hello everybody, Kieran AK The Laird here, back with another video. And this one is one that I promised in my last video that I was going to do, so it follows on quite nicely. And uh, those of you who watch my channel obviously would have seen my little look at the uh, Atari Owners Club uh, package. In my last video, what you got and um, what came with it and the letters and everything like that. And one of the things that was inside it was a catalogue. And I mentioned that I had quite a few more Atari catalogues. And what I actually wanted to do was take a good look at all of them. Um, so you could see a bit more about them and what was contained in them. So here I've got a selection that I've acquired over the years. Now, one thing uh, I will mention first of all is that pretty much all these catalogues, except one, which I'm going to kind of leave to the end, it's a, a little bit different, a bit special, were all from the Warner Atari days. Um, they liked their, their catalogues and seemed to produce a lot of different ones. I haven't got any for the, well, not, not for the... Atari 8-bit or the Atari 2600 really from outside of that era. I've got some Jaguar and Lynx stuff but um, I, was, I don't think they actually produced any for the Atari 2600 or 7800 in the, in, in the Trammell era um, that I know of. Not, not that I've come across certainly um, anyway. But we'll have a look at, look, at, look at little look at what we've got here. So We'll start with this one on the end. It's in a little bit battered condition, as you can probably see. Uh, not the greatest. Uh, a little bit creased and mangled and stuff. But you've got to love the um, the artwork on the front with the spaceman and the tennis player and the pilot there and a captain or an army man at the back. You know, they were sort of trying to invoke the characters that featured in their games and on the back. Nobody offers you as many different games to play as Atari. <coughs> Excuse me, I've still got a bit of a, a chesty cough going on that I can't seem to shift. And, uh, yeah, so let's have a look. I'm hoping the light doesn't reflect too much. I was finding it very hard to get in a position where you didn't get the light because it's such a beautiful sunny day outside. So there's never been so many ways to have fun. Atari's video compute system now offers more than 1,500 different game variations. Clever that, isn't it? Say game variations, because some obviously the cartridges had loads. I mean, what was it? Space Invaders had um, 112, I believe. So, you know, they've kind of exploited it a bit to make it sound like they've got a few more games than they've actually got there. And there's your system set up with a nice screenshot imposed onto the TV and all the different controllers. <coughs> Excuse me again, sorry. So this is Atari, welcome to your board. If you just acquired your video computer system, congratulations, get ready for real excitement from your home TV. Have fun while you're sharpening your mental and physical coordination. You'll play rousing, challenging, sophisticated video games, games that made Atari famous. For starters, your video computer system comes with combat, with 27 thrilling games and variations. That's just the beginning because Atari offers you a library of the greatest video games ever invented. So strap yourself down, take a deep breath and get ready. Be a flying ace, be a tennis star and a space pioneer all in one afternoon. You'll have to, you'll have thrill after thrill, whether you're in the thick of a dogfight, screeching around a racetrack or dodging asteroids in an alien galaxy. Most of all, you're going to have fun. Atari fun. Years and years of fun and satisfaction are assured because your video computer system is designed to be as up to date next year as it is today with interchangeable controllers and cartridges you can enjoy the full range of video computer system games with difficulty options so the games get better you'll get better as you get better sorry with crisp bright color on a color tv i love when i have to mention that disclaimer i i myself had a black and white tv for many 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 years as a kid and incredible true to life sound effects with special circuits pr to protect your atari and especially with famous Atari quality. At Atari, we take fun seriously. Lovely little intro there. 
So there we go. I won't read all of these, obviously. Starts off with Indy 500. The, the only game I think that was ever released to use with the uh, um, driving controllers. Video Olympics, a game that basically was an evolution of Pong. Looks very simple, but get a few other people to play with you, and it's brilliant. Beam me up, Captain. That's Starship. Burn Rubber. That was Street Racer. Not the greatest game, Street Racer. There we go. We've got Surround. And we've got Blackjack there. Basic Math. Yay. A game that every kid didn't want their parents to buy. Air Sea Battle. Flag Capture. Space War. These are all the really early titles, so Home Run Outlaw, David Crane's first, uh, first was it his first game? No, I think Fruit Machine might, uh, Slop Machine might have been his first game, but it's certainly the first one that sort of impressed with its massive sprites anyway. Breakout, Hunt and Score. Gotta love these, these brilliant, I mean Sherlock Holmes there and the guy in the hat for Hangman. They've got brilliant illustrations, so their art was just fantastic. Basketball, which famously was featured in the movie cult movie Airplane, with Kareem Abdul Jabbar playing it in the cockpit. The ultimate chase scene with slot racers. Yeah, okay. Casino. Skydiver. <laughs> The Angry Bull, I mean, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Bowling there. That was done by one of the Activision guys, I can't remember which one did it now. Miniature Golf. Love that, that's a great image, isn't it, that one? Brilliant, I made a real effort for that one. Oh, there's Slot Machine I was mentioning a minute ago. David Crane, I think that was his first game that he did. Human Cannonball there. Football, Kenyan Bomber, New Games, I like that. In the beginning Atari invented a coin operated game called Pong. People went bananas over it, so we invented more games. Games like Breakout and Indy 800. And then we made games that follow people home and hooked up to their TVs. Now it's the video computer system, the greatest breakthrough and fun in 50 years. The library of the most exciting, challenging, and sophisticated video games ever invented. The future, we're committed to bringing out a lot more fantastic new game program cartridges. We even have a very secured laboratory in the Sierra Nevada mountains, the ideal setting for our kind of creativity. The new cartridges are really amazing and every bit as much as fun as the ones we have now. Some of them appear to be on the next few pages, so they'll be available in the stores soon. Note that Atari may time from time to time make changes in order to... to let make changes in these games and variations in order to make them even more fun to play. So it's advertised in video chess, backgammon, not that exciting so far. Superman, I guess they're pretty excited about that at the time, and I guess a lot of other people would have been as well, because um, you didn't see many licensed video games back then, so that's a pretty big thing. Basic programming, incredibly limited program indeed. And then that nice little diagram shows you what controllers you need for what games. And that's that one. Let's put that one back. So we go with this one next. So this one straight away says 49 game program cartridges. Shame they couldn't have just made it 50, eh? Made a nice round number. The OCD in me doesn't like the fact that that's just 49. So one thing... Um, you notice straight away, this one is obviously quite a bit later. Um, they started using photographs rather than just illustrations. I won't, I won't read out all of this one. Uh, and then this one is split into different categories. So, space station, racetrack. And they've used a lot of the the box art rather than different drawings like they used in the last one. So, oh, missed a page there. So, start off with Demons to Dive and some guess our oh, estimated availability. So, that wasn't even out yet. So, it's almost like a preview for that one by the looks of things. 
So quite unique uh, game for the paddles there, Dean and Mr. Diamond. So Pac-Man's in this one. So shows we're getting we're coming forward in time a little bit there. Super breakout in classics corner. This really probably what a lot of the kids called the boring games back then. I know I probably would have. Nice asteroids image there, lovely. In Berserk. So that again, previewing that by the looks of things, it wasn't actually quite out yet. And Star Raiders. See an iconic game. See now we're talking this would have been my kind of stuff. Asteroids, Defender, Missile Command, Space Invaders. Yard Revenge. I was a big fan of arcade games and still am. Look at that. What a great piece of artwork that is there. Absolutely stunning. Adventure Haunted House and Superman. The racetrack. Dodger Mini 500, Night Driver, Slot Racer, Street Racer. Not the most exciting racing games there. We haven't had pole position yet at this point. Sports Arena. So all the early sports games, most of which weren't very good. Uh, Pele Soccer, the uh, very first licensed sports game. Into the combat zone with a nice Warlords picture. One of the best multiplayer games ever made, without any doubt. Uh, learning Centre, so educational games. I said about boring games earlier. These, this is the part of the catalogue that kids definitely wouldn't have wanted their parents to look at. Don't look at these pages, Mum. They're really boring. Or them accessories. Look at that game centre. I've got one of them somewhere. It's actually quite battered, but I have got one of those, which is quite cool. And I've got one of those there. <laughs> nice, nice to see them. And coming challenges, mentioning that there's more games coming soon. So that was pretty straightforward. It, it adds a few more games off the last one with stuff like Pac Man making an appearance and uh, Star Raiders and Defender and stuff like that. So, what do we got next? So, we'll go for this one next. Now, this one at first appearance does look like it's quite similar to the first one we looked at there, the yellow one. And you'll see that this makes mention of, of having 42 games in it. So it's kind of somewhere in between um, those first two that we looked at, I'm guessing, because that one was up to 49. So we're probably not going to see anything new in this one, so we won't spend a great deal of time on it. Uh, so they've got Space Invaders on the TV, though. And it shows a nice range of the boxes. So again, they're using, although they've used the nice drawn image on the front cover, they've gone straight, straight off with some photographs in there. But it looks like they've continued some lovely artwork in here as well. I mean, look at this great one for asteroids there. Lovely. And boasting about its 66 game variations. I mean, I just love all this Atari artwork. It's just brilliant. Space Invaders. There we go, Superman again. Breakout 3D tic tac toe. It's amazing how they obviously tried to come up with a drawing to try and make 3D tic tac toe seem exciting. <laughs> Casino Golf. Pat Cameron. Great way they tried to make that, that seem more exciting as well. The creativity of these guys was just astounding, really, wasn't it? Oh, lovely. On there for video checkers as well. <laughs> Thello. Oh, if we put Thello and add an alien guy in and might make it more exciting. <laughs> Love Circus Atari. Great game that is. I always remember buying the CMVG. Um, guide to consoles and them having a really rave review of Circus. I absolutely loved it. I remember looking at the screenshot and thinking it doesn't look like much. Later I played it, it was excellent. Oh, I love the drawing for Pele there. Look at that, that's absolutely brilliant. The ball on fire. Brilliant. Soccer the Pele way. 
Finch up. That looks strangely like it could be Nolan Bushnell, which is quite funny. Just notice that. It does look a bit like it's, it's Nolan. I wonder if that's what they were trying to do when they drew that. No, it's quite funny. Just such great art. Just love it. I mean, look at that dodging one there. That's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic bit of artwork there. Love it. Sort of video pinball there as well. Great pimpish picture there for Warlords. Look at that. Superb stuff. Long live the king. Well, I like the Maze Craze. That's, that's some nice creativity there to do that one. I like Maze Craze. It's a good little game actually. And a cartridge tidy thing. I don't have one of those ones, I have to say. The ones in the last catalogue. And there we go. And again, they've got the little diagram so you can see which um, game you have to use, which controllers. How cool. Yeah, it's got an 81 copyright day on the back of that one. What's the last one? Did that have a copyright day on it? 82. Yeah, not surprising. Year after. So, the last one we're going to have a look at. We did have a little look at it in the last video, but we'll try to be a bit more. Uh, in depth, uh, slightly different because it opens this way, um, which makes it slightly different. And you'll notice as well this one, um, it's in multiple languages. So, this is maybe that's one reason why they included it with the uh, the user club stuff. So, again, we've got an explanation of, of what everything is so, what the uh, you know, the kids' games thing is, and NTSC systems power region. Um, so adventure territory so we've got again they've decided to go with this splitting it into categories categories thing and what we've got here now you'll notice is, is much shorter descriptions because we've got different languages so they're very straight to the point none of the the nice drawings anymore we've just got a, a, I say a screenshot it's not really a screenshot it's a mock-up They've just done a drawing of like kind of what the graphics look like, um, and actually in many cases actually make them look a bit a bit worse, more blocky and, and more pixelated. But uh, there we go, and a screenshot of the boxes. So yeah, skill gallery. Should be my skill gallery. I mean, I'm not sure how you could compare Berserk to something like Breakout or Circus Atari, really, but. Um, yeah, a bit of a strange one, that skill gallery. I mean, all games require skill. That's the nature of games, so it's a bit of a strange one. There's Pac-Man making an appearance there. Next we've got, oh, Classics Corner again. Oh dear, more chess and backgammon. There's Othello. Learning Centre again, the educational stuff. I love that wizard. Wizard drawing is brilliant. Reminds me of Merlin on the Gauntlet. A great deal, actually. It says your brain games and code breaker basic programming. More from the Learning Centre. Concentration, Hangman. Space Station. So I would have thought Berserk would have been in this category, but apparently not. Asteroid Defender, Missile Command. Oh, no, we go back. Space Invaders, of course. A big seller, the Killer App. Space War, Yard Revenge. I like that, that's good. It's the first time we've seen a real nice drawing, actually. Sports Arena. So starting off with the mate Pele. All the usual stuff that we've seen in the other ones really. Again, it's all very much games from the early early years of Atari. We haven't even gone onto the silver box designs yet. 
catalogs. And that one's 1982 again, it's for the cover for 1982. Apparently it was printed in the Netherlands, so obviously this was very much designed for Europe, this catalog there, um, it seems, obviously because of the different languages as well. And so we've got one more kind of bonus item to have a look at. And uh, this was actually with one of my XE games. I've got a few of these. I think this one was in Summer Games, I seem to remember. Could be wrong, but I think it was in Summer Games this one. But I've got quite a few of these in quite a few of my XE games because a lot of my XE cartridges that I picked up were, were brand new. Um, quite a lot of them were even still sealed. So they had these inside them, but not all of them did. So they didn't put them in every single one. But some of you might have seen these Atari Advanced ones before, but obviously this is the only exception here that it's not a 2600 one. It's obviously the Atari XE, and it's also from the Trammell era, not from the Warner or Bushnell era. So first of all, that's how it looks for the front when you open it. If you turn it over, you'll get the Atari Advantage, collect games and win prizes, win a trip to California, win Atari systems and peripherals, there's the 7800. The XE system, an XE disk drive, you don't see many of them. Atari game cartridges, love the stupid box there, Atari t-shirts. So you can win a trip to go to the Atari headquarters. That would have been quite interesting back then, that's for sure. Enter an essay writing contest to win the trip. Now this actually folds out, this is where it gets interesting. So we find out the next bit, because it's quite interesting the way it folds out into different parts. So you, a lot of you probably might have seen this XE2 systems in one for, for twice the fun thing. So I think it was actually used as an advert in magazines as well. Um, so it's basically saying that the, the XE is a console and a computer. And there's your coupon there. If you try and get your prize. Now... We now open it up. This is where it's going to get difficult because I'm not going to be able to fit all of this on camera. But I'm going to have to basically try and show you it. Um, if I can get it to stand, I can pick my camera up and hopefully I'll come back a bit maybe and try and get the whole thing in, in shot. There we go. Now, what a great poster. It's a bit folded there because it's like that to get it to stand that you can see you've got joust on there you've got crystal castles on there pole position um commando there desert falcon i can see some joust going on centipede obviously um millipede that the frog there is from tower toppler which is quite interesting because tower toppler xc was never released um hockey player there yeah, there was the 7800 version was released, but yeah, it's interesting included with the XE because you can see down there you've got the 7800 game, 7800, the XE game system, and the 2600. The hockey player, I suppose he's meant to represent the hat trick, I guess, on the 7800. I don't know. Uh, Mario Brothers and Donkey Kong, where the Donkey Kong is laughably bad, the Mario Brothers not quite so bad. Um, yeah, what a great poster that is. I'd love to have actually frame one of these and put them on my wall. I'm not sure my missus would be too happy about that, but I would love to do it because they're, they're absolutely great. Let me just put that down for a moment. There is the stuff on the back that want to look at. So let's see if we can get the back to stand up as well. So there's the stuff we went through. So you've got the rules and that above that. But zoom back again. See, now you've got all of the, the XC games. The XC collector poster. So if we have a look, it starts off with like arcades, we've got Crystal Castles and Millipede, Space Invaders. Now what's interesting is that Space Invaders is there, but they never release Space Invaders in XE packaging, which I'm actually quite surprised about, um, but it wasn't. Crossbow Battle Zone at Jungle Hunt. So obviously Space Invaders is the only game there that really that was one of the early releases. Uh, I mean, Jungle Hunt and there was a silver box game, but they were still easily available at that point. Same with Robotron and Moon Patrol. The silver box games are pretty easy to come apart, come, a, come apart, come about. Uh, Centipede, though, their Centipede was an early release as well. That was a big box release as well. So that's actually another one that was there that was one of the early releases. Uh, Joust, Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong Junior. That was there with 
Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong was re-released in Blue Box, but Donkey Kong Jr. was a Silver Box game. Stranger never released that in the Blue Box site. So they did with Mario Brothers Super Breakout. That was another early release as well, early release game. Uh, Real Sports Tennis. Big box silver release that one. Um, Fight Night Thunder Fox Final Legacy Star Raiders 2. Midnight Magic Rest of Fractalus 101 Necromancer. Desert Valken. Load Runner. Intimasis Into the Eagle's Nest is coming soon. Blue Max Barnyard Blaster, Crime Blaster, Ball Blazer, Archon, and Gatto. So, great poster there, um, with a lovely little look at the um, XC catalogue, and I wish they'd done more of these kind of things. There was posters with a lot of Lynx games, and uh, that they never included any catalogues with them. I think, I don't think they did with the Jag either, they, there was catalogues of stuff that were available, but they never stuck them in with the games. Um, I seem to remember getting one of some description with my Jag, and I might have even got one with my Jag CD, but I can't remember exactly. But then a lot of the time, the retailer would shove things like that in themselves anyway. But um, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed these, this little look at these catalogues. So I've um, got loads of this stuff in my archive, so I have been meaning to kind of pull more of it out and, you know, go through it and have a look at it. And... Uh, if I come across more Atari catalogues, then obviously I will do a follow-up video at some point and, and do some more. I've already done a similar video on the um, Activision uh, catalogues, so if you like those, have a look at my channel and have a look for the uh, artistry of Activision video that I did, because that has loads of the Activision catalogues that released, and I, I've got a, a quite a lot of the Magic ones as well in my uh, in my stash. So at some point I will pull out all my magic stuff as well and have a look at that um, and do something quite similar to what I did with the uh, the Activision video where I had a look at the box art stuff as well because I think that would be quite an interesting look because your magic were kind of, I suppose, I say after Activision, but a lot of people considered them contemporaries. They considered them as good as, but I think they were slightly behind Activision in terms of, of how important and how great they were, but they certainly contributed a lot. Um, to the Atari 2600 and provided some of the, the best games on the system but yeah these are very much pride of place in my collection I love that poster at the end and I thought you would dig seeing that so uh, that's why I've thrown that one in because there wasn't really any other Atari 8-bit stuff that I had but yeah uh, thanks for watching and uh, as always if there's anything you, you are looking to see or you want to know if I do have and you've got any questions then obviously feel free in the comments to to, to, to ask if you don't ask you don't get and all that uh, but I hope you enjoyed watching and I'll see you all again for another video very soon thank you bye bye